This week on Backyard Footy. You know what? You see American Pie? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Is that oh, I don't know. When I was younger, I thought American Pie. You went to watch it. Well, you didn't go to watch it. Watch it is right beside the school, right? University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like American Pie. I mean, that was that was kind of far. So like, uh, okay. I stayed focused on soccer in school. I got to look in that part because I knew for a fact that if I went to a big school, mm. I wouldn't play in Pittsburgh right now. of current professionals, former professionals, and anyone that's been involved in the game. Back Your Footy is brought to you by the Beautiful Game Network of Podcasts. That's BGN.FM on the internet. You can also follow them on Twitter at the BGNFM. Back Your Footy is also brought to you by the Roughneck Scars and Golden Gold Press. <laughs> very excited to bring you my homeboys back from last year. Very good episode. First and foremost, I believe the French musician Tomas in his second year. Nico Brett, my yard brother from Jamaica in his fourth year. And we have, last but not least, Toby, a.k.a. Tobias, in his third year as well, hometown hero, my little bro, back home. Welcome, fellas. Welcome to my show. Appreciate you guys coming. It's good to come on. Nico, how's everything? How's the flight in? Oh, it was cool. That was a bit long. Yeah? Uh, you had a layover too, or not? Yeah, we got one more. Uh, that's when you sent me that first night. Yeah, we're back home, man. Quick mm-hmm. second. <laughs> <laughs> see the people. How's the season been going for y'all? Started off a bit slow, you know, but we've been on a good run mm-hmm. lately, you know. It's only going to get more challenging, so. Yeah, we've been struggling in the beginning, because we got a lot of goals, which we usually don't. Mm-hmm. And then, now, starts rolling six Nico scores. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it kind of like reminds us of like last year. Mm-hmm. We started off really hot, and then, kind of like, you know, we like started off as in now. So now we're in like a four game winning streak with us trying to yeah. to win games. And everything in the camp was good during that little dry spell, you know, like... Yeah, everything was good, off. you know what I mean? Everyone believes in the team, so... I feel like we just weren't getting the results. We, yeah. I mean, because we were, I mean, I would say we were... We had the results for most of the games, but we just gave, up, gave away a lot of points in the stretch. We weren't getting wins. So that's definitely something we changed and turned around. Because mm-hmm. I mean, obviously it's frustrating to be leading most of the game and then mm-hmm. losing or okay, tying or whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. that's definitely something we knew we had to change around if we wanted to have a somewhat successful season. What about for you guys personally, though? How do you guys been feeling this season been going for you guys? Mm, I think it's going good. You know what I mean? Speaking up. Mm-hmm. We get stronger as a team, so individually everybody starts getting better too. So that helps, helps a lot. Who's having the cookouts these days, though? Everyone's coming over to Chef Brett. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the chefs say, you know, what, so. <laughs> yeah, so I'm really cooking. Toby cooks sometimes, you know what I mean? And he invited boys over for food. So that was hobby. <laughs> I love his eat. You know, you're the Jamaican, right? right. The Jamaican chef is right there. <laughs> Who? Yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. 
Would you say Bob's trusting you guys a little more in your second year under him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think so. You know what I mean? It's, it's much better than last year. Awesome. Some stuff you would like normally, you know what I mean, stress itself over. Right. You barely talk to us about it. Well, for me, you know what I mean? So I think he's trusting me a little bit more. And you feel that in practice? And yeah, that kind of stuff. definitely. I would say he's trusting me in terms of playing me. Consistently. Consistently, yeah. so, I mean, yeah. But would you, I mean, the roster, I wouldn't think is as deep as it is last year, mm -hmm. would you say? Would you say that? Uh, I would agree. You know, I feel like we have a younger team this year. So it's obviously a different vibe. But, you know, still same, you know, yeah. the usual hardworking guys, mm -hmm. you know, grinding, same goal, fun and win, you know. Mm -hmm. Definitely a younger team, I um, Yeah, we're not, I think we're not as deep as last year, though. When I came in last year as a rookie, it was really hard to win, to earn like, the starting starting lineup mm -hmm. to get in. And uh, I feel like this year you can see like who's going to start and everybody got a role in the team. Right, right. That's more defined. Yeah, I have, I have a good core from last year. Too, yeah, yeah, feel like yeah. Like it's the core and everyone else around yeah. it. Yeah. Based off like minutes and stuff. What y'all think about the USL this year? I think. Than last year. Oh, I yeah. think every year is like just getting yeah. better and better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Last year you could count out a few teams where yeah. okay, we could get three points here. This year, whoop. I got a for real. Yeah. Team, yeah. For real. Every team, even if you got what Hartford last place, every team. Yeah. 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 They beat us through uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. if you don't bring your A game. Yeah, you're about to lose a few some points. Something. I feel like this year has been a lot more money invested into a certain teams. Just everyone in general, like the quality. Definitely yeah. certain teams. Out of a good seventeen of eighteen teams are all gonna fight this year. Yeah. I'm gonna battle with you. Yeah. It's East um, playoffs. And, and, and you know, funny you know, you could see it already. Like the first part of the season, you see St. Louis up there. Was, everyone thinking like right. St. Louis is just yeah. gonna run away with it. No, you see Tampa, no, you see Indy 11 coming. Yeah, it's coming strong. Yeah. It's a long race, and usually the teams that have good quality and have a good core, they know that guy. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you guys, yeah, Louisville. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's long, and like you said, it's like St. Louis there. Yeah. I don't even think they're in playoff right now. Maybe 9th to 10th, but from 1st to 9th to 10th, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. So you know what's up? Like, I think you're in 10th position, it's but long season, if you don't bring in A games, mm -hmm. Here in for trouble, and you can't get complacent. Mm -hmm. Who do you think is like the toughest opponent this season so far? You played? I think Indy was the best that we played. Yeah, I said Indy. Indy, yeah. even though I thought we, I thought we played well defensively against Indy. Played well defensively. At Indy? Or at Indy. They have a lot of the ball, the position, yeah. they are strong. They're a good team for sure. Well, an experienced player. Wow, yeah. so you good. know what's a good thing about your teams? Like sometimes they see like MS guys come to the USL and they're just like, okay, I'm mm -hmm. just gonna play our game. Mm -hmm. Those guys that in the um, use it right now on their team, they're there to like make their name. Like, yeah. It doesn't matter if they're older players or younger players. They just want to show that okay, we are really good. We're coming for this. We're giving our A games at all times. Nah, I feel the same exact way. When we played them, they came here and we were down 3-0 in 20 minutes. <laughs> At home. It was like the first, second game of the Not first, it was. And it finished 4 1 2, bro. It was bad. A long day. <sighs> long year. I don't know, I don't know, I'll tell you that. God damn. Long year, man. Uh, with Mark gone, though, do you guys feel like his absence a little bit or without? Because I don't think you guys got another yeah. assistant coach. Personally. I, I mean, because, like, we have another assistant coach, but it's not really one that has as much power, I would say, mm -hmm. as Mark does over, you know, certain decisions being made mm -hmm. overall. And it's, like, overall his presence is being, like, Who is it? the dad of, uh, if you will, of the team or whatever. But, I mean, he still keeps in touch with some of the guys, so he's, I mean, yeah, you, you would come to the local room, talk to players, like if, yeah. you, if you had the bad practice, a bad game, you would talk to yeah. you and, and 
Yeah. Those little things go a long way. Yeah, because like for me personally, he's very good at motivating yeah. players. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're down, you need someone that's just going to help to pick you up. You know what I mean? And sometimes you will see your weakness and try to pull you aside and help you to work on your weakness. So. Especially coming from a coach too, and yeah. you can see that the higher ups are the supportive of you. They want you to succeed, and yeah. it's gonna motivate you to go further. They're really, I mean, I'm sure there's been plenty of times I said, but for me, they just turn their shoulder on you, and you're really just like, all right, well, is it my performance? Yeah. Or they're not liking me anymore. But that's that communication goes a long way. So, you know, yeah. so for those who don't know, Toby was, is an original guest. He was on episode one, very first guest. So unfortunately, tonight you won't be hearing a story. But go back to episode one of Back Your Footy, listen to the story, you don't want to miss it for real. Very, very intriguing story, but first and foremost, we're going to hear from the French Connection. Thomas, why don't you tell us your story a little bit? So I started back in France, uh, in Normandy. I was at the Academy of Cannes. They played in League One. I mean, they got, just got through the game day, so they're going to play League Two next year. Mm -hmm. So I did all my academy there, like from under 11 to under 19. Then at under 19, you know if you're gonna sign pro or not, and they released me. Mm -hmm. So I was a bit lost. I went to play fifth year, which is decent level. When you're 19, that's hard to get there. Fifth, so, fifth, fifth, fifth division? Yeah, yeah fifth division. Mm -hmm. Because like people are kind of like, I would say 27, 28, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're strong. So that's hard as a 19 years old to get there. Mm -hmm. you know? So I was playing there good and stuff, but no one picked me. So. I was lost again. Mm -hmm. I decided to come in American college to get my degree, get an education, and then that was a teacher school mm -hmm. at the University of Charleston. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it went well for me. I got my degree and I got the opportunity to sign here in Pittsburgh. And now let's backtrack a little bit though. So why did you even make that leap to come over here? You know, was it for school? Because yeah, so like they offered you a full ride to come over here. Uh, yeah, they go the from full ride to come over here. Um, yeah, I had to come here to get an education. I got my, I graduated from high school and then nothing. And so what I'm going to do, play soccer, find a job, like... So you I need, need a degree. was the common get a An education, yeah, yeah, just an education. I wanted to travel too because my whole life I stayed in Normandy. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to travel, mm -hmm. get my degree and... And college went well, even though it was D2, like I met so many good people. I enjoyed my time. It was a small town, but that was fun. Where did you go again? Uh, University of Charleston in West Virginia. And uh, I got lucky, we won the national championship. I ended up being player of the, of the year. Mm -hmm. And so from there, everything clicked and the started. Two. The old D2, yeah. Wow. So everything started like that. Yeah. I got invited to the MLS Combine. Mm -hmm. I went there. I played well. What position? I played number six, defensive mid. I played, I played, I played well, but I didn't get drafted. So then again, I'm lost. I'm about to go home, pack my stuff. My coach tell me, yeah, you have to stay. Like you have to finish your degree. You have six months left. All right, I stay. Then uh, we have that friendly game against Pittsburgh. Spring, spring semester. Friendly game against Pittsburgh. I played there. They called me back to, to go in preseason with them, and it went well, Damn, so bro. I signed up. That's crazy though, right? Yeah, I mean, I got lucky to be fair, like, I'm, I'm being honest, I got lucky, a lot of luck. I mean, I worked hard, but luck is part of life, I think. You're in the right spot for a reason, though, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, it just, all the stars align. What was crazy is the last year, you in the car with us when we were talking to this man on trial, or sitting there, with uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that story. And this guy's like, man, I'm about to pack my bag. Yeah, about to go oh. home. <laughs> Bob's not offering me a contract. I'm done with this. I'm like, Tomas, like, listen, just go through it. This is before pit or after pit? Before. That was after. No, that was after. Before. I think that was after pit. It has to be after pit because pit game, yeah, you balled <laughs> up. That's what I'm saying. Like, after pit, you were like, no, dude. No. no, because oh, so what, what happened? I trained the first week, right? And at the end of the week, on Friday, we play against Pete. And before the game, Bob come up to me and say, like, you're going to play with Pete today. All right. So in my head, I'm like, ah, you already know. 
So I play, I play my game, and in my head, I'm like, yeah, this may be my last soccer game because I'm going to go home and probably not play yet because I don't want to. So I play, I try to enjoy my, myself as much as I can. I make Cristiano Francois, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, in the car, I'm like, all right, it's pretty clear to me. We have a game Sunday against Bentley, and he told me to come back, but I don't feel like it. I'm yeah. just going to go home, man. My school is three, three hours away, I'm just gonna go home. And you guys talk to me in the car like, you have no, no other option, you have to stay, yeah, you have to stay. So I, I stayed because of you guys, to be fair. And then, yeah, and then you went away. Well. Well. Well, <laughs> got that new contract and everything. I'll take that piece of it. Hey, 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 <laughs> so what was the, when you came over here, what was the comparison kind of with French soccer and American soccer? What was the differences for you? Um, at first, I didn't really feel it because in my school there's a lot of international and most of them they play in Europe uh, and my coach is English. So that was kind of the same mentality. I started to feel it when I went to play uh, Summer League, the PDL. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like everybody give more energy before the games, hyping up, like yelling and stuff. Mm -hmm. I feel like back home is more calm. Oh, like yeah. you have you have rules, you have to follow rules, and that's it. Exactly. You have to play your game, and exactly. yeah. But I like I like the way American people like chills up and mm -hmm. yeah. You have to give your best all the games mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, I like it. Well, that's different. Not like that over there. Yeah, you have to, but it's more like selfish. So you have to do your thing, and I have to do my thing, yeah. and hopefully we win. Yeah, we're together. Yeah. yeah. So you're basically everyone just play their roles. Right. Okay. You're a defender, make sure you defend. Make sure you score goals. Yeah. Right. Right. And there's a lot more money involved, I assume too. So yeah, the dudes all think families too. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, that makes sense though. Yeah. You still have uh, goals and dreams, or what's your aspirations? Obviously, I always uh, dream to play MLS, mm -hmm. obviously, but I think it's hard when you play USL, and especially when you're international, to make it to the MLS. Mm -hmm. um, but I try to do, do my best career here in USL. Mm -hmm. I want to stay here. I want to play here for, for a long time. Here is in America. America, America, yeah, America. Yeah, let me just clarify that. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, but to be fair, two or three years from now, you never know. Some guys might be making some big time MLS money here. Yeah, yeah there's a lot more money in this league now. Like, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I'm saying. Six figures and stuff. Like, you can see it growing. Yeah. You can see it growing. Yeah. Really. Mm. Nah. Super Brett. Tell us your story right So I'm from Kingston, Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Started to play at age maybe. Well, my mom said since I was in Delhi. My brother is from Kingston. Because my dad was a player too, but I really started to play at maybe age eight. Um, some regular stuff kicking around in the street and maybe like they have like some small football competition around the area. Go and play and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really get started officially until like 12. Mm -hmm. I started to play in the under 13 league for a team called Mountain View. Then from there I went to Santos, the U15 team. I went to Fraser's Whip. How are you getting these opportunities? You know people? Not really. Like I didn't really know a lot of people, but you know how it is whenever. People see you and they don't know you, but you're playing really well. You know what I mean? I, when every moment I get on the field, I start to show people like, yo, I can really do my thing. You know what I mean? Turn it in. Yes. People don't notice that. Yeah, so. And I went to Fraser's Web, I got called up to the Jamaica on the 17 team to go on a tryout. I went there, I got into the team, went to play for the U17. How's uh, that experience? was great, you know what I mean? That's when I, I was like a second time traveling all over the country to play soccer. You went to a major tournament with the 17? No, we just went to the Caribbean round. Gotcha, gotcha. You know what I mean? World Cup qualifiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I didn't make it to the Canada Cup region, but 
it was really good experience, you know, and see what soccer was like outside of Jamaica. And from there, I just started like, <laughs> at that point, I just started like, do my thing, like, I get to high school, like, you know, high school soccer back home is like one of the biggest things. I mean, I started scoring 11 goals. Um, one year I got a leading goal scorer. I was How old you? I was like 18. I was a leading goal scorer. Got called up to the Jamaica under 23 team. And now the under 20 team first. I went there, played in the World Cup qualifiers. Came back, they called me to the U23 team. I went there, I uh, was trying to go pro, but every time something pops up in the last minute, everything does break down. So I was like, what am I gonna do? My mom is very big in education, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna make my mom proud. Come on. So I decided to go to this um, college combine. They have like a lot of coaches. Oh, uh, that's right. Came to, a Caribbean um, college combine, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have this one in Jamaica where like 10 to 12 coaches from college from like D2 to D1 will come to Jamaica and like the guys who play high school soccer will just have like two days of soccer and coaches just try to select whoever they want. Mm -hmm. And Robert Morris coach got in touch with me and I was like, okay, I'm interested because he had, he had like two Jamaicans on the team. No, three Jamaicans, Prince Samuels, Carl Reed and Devon Speed Williams. Devon Speed Williams plays a little bit right now. I didn't want to leave the country knowing that I don't have like a Jamaican brother to like mm -hmm. be overseas with. So I decided to go to Robert Morris. Uh, first year was really bad. I didn't use it. I didn't, I, it was the first time seeing snow. I had no jackets. <laughs> 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 I didn't. I didn't. You had no idea. They no, probably told you it was a gold. I swear I didn't remember nothing about <laughs> like snow really? and those stuff. I got there in August, first week of September, wearing t-shirts. Second week, I just wake up one morning, it's cold. I'm like, wow. So like I didn't get my first jacket until like late October. I had to like literally sprint from my room. To the cafeteria, sprint from the cat cafeteria to my classes, from my classes to practice. Ah! So my first year, I didn't score any goals. I was like injured. Like the food was different. Like you know what I mean. So after I talked to the coach, they decide for our second year, they're gonna let us move off campus because he realized we're responsible and we know how to cook. You know what I mean. So. We moved off campus, I started cook. After that, it was just magic. Three times MVP for my conference. Every year, I'm like leading goal scorer at my conference. One year, I was like, I had the most points in the nation uh, as a sophomore. And from that, I went to the endless combine and got selected by the Portland Timbers. I senior year? Yeah, senior year. Got selected by the Portland Timbers. When, you know, basically when they select you, after the first round, basically you're going on track. Try, yeah. So I went there, they selected me for, the, I got picked for the first team. They signed me to the first team. Mm -hmm. And I just came, got there, um, I went there and I did my best. Played one MLS game. My first year as a pro, I scored eight goals, five assists in, in the second team. Two teams, yes. Yeah. What year was this? this is this as well? 2016. Mm -hmm. And the second year they went in a different direction, so I didn't really play. I was injured. Okay, so last year I came to Pittsburgh. And I'm here to show Portland Timbers exactly what you guys right. have signed me in the first um, first round, you know what I mean? So I just went there, went came to Pittsburgh, you know what I mean? Because this is like my home away from home yeah, because you know I came to school was. here and everything was just like so basically, I was like at home. Um, did really well last year. I did 15 goals, 8 assists. And I mean, this year I'm just trying to do better. Now, what's crazy is though, after Portland, you went, you went to trial with Bob, right, in Rochester? Yeah, I went to, no, first, after the first half of the year, I leave Portland, I went to Israel. Mm. So 
So I was elite. I was with elite Nazareth. Things wasn't working out. You know, I mean, they wanted to play me out of my position. How long you there? Two months. I was just like, okay. Yeah. Then my agent told me that um, Coach Bobby is looking for a striker, and <laughs> I went there. <laughs> I went there after like ten days. He was like, I'm not sure. And then at like, the moment of transfer window closed. Told me yo, you could stay and practice just in case next year I'm looking for a striker. Let me see what you have. Five days after he came to me, I'm like, made a big mistake. I should have signed him. I was like, That's so what you're training the rest of the year? Yeah, so I just practice for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. And then after he told me next year for Rochester, I'm gonna bring you in. So make sure you leave all your information. I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. Then Rochester got folded. He called me down here, down to Pittsburgh for a tryout. Came, did my thing, worked really hard. He decided to sign me. Gave him 15 goals, 8 assists last year. Last year you were on trial too? Yeah. Yeah, I was on trial too. Yeah, so I went on tryout. How was it mentally coming from MLS to go to try out for a new SL team? How was it? It was pretty easy for me because me, I'm not cocky or anything, but I'm always about proving myself what I can do because this is what soccer is about. Prove yourself. It's not all about where you're coming from or your name. And I think that's where a lot of guys go wrong. Oh, I'm coming from the MLS to the US and I'm just going to walk through this league. No, it's different. You have to be willing to work hard and run a lot. You know what I mean? You have to give your very best at all times because. Younger players want to make their names, right. and your players want to move from USL to MLS. So they're gonna come and work hard every day. So if you don't work hard, that's where you go wrong. Mm -hmm. That mentality was like that here too. I mean, we didn't win a game like six games in, and then we just kept tying. We only won one game in fifteen games, bro. One in fifteen. We're just like, but it comes back to that mindset mentality. Like the first month. First of all, we only had nine dudes in preseason for a full month. Then dudes started to show up late and took this league for a joke, bro. Like, everybody, the Indy came, worked us. Loudon came, worked us 3 1. Red Bull came, put a bet to him, came on the field. We played in St. Louis in the middle of a storm there, looking like Barcelona. Everybody was, but dudes were just like, ah, oh, whatever. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let like, this USL. Like, and then when you got punished for it now, like, you're starting to wake up. But, yeah, yeah that mentality. Um, that's, that's, where I, that's what I said earlier. This league, if you don't decide to work hard, people don't show you up. You won't, be, you won't come with this MLS thing. Mm -hmm. You're in this league, you have to be like a USL player now because you're in USL. You have to come here, give your very best, work hard. What was the American style of the person the Jamaican style when you came over? Oof. That's different, like, they work harder here, you know, wait and wait for the ball. I think back home people have more, uh, people more, have more technique back home. Here it's more like kick and run, you know what I mean? But back home it's more like skill and stuff like that. Depends on the team too, but that, I know what you mean. It's definitely more direct here yeah. in America. You said you were called up to the U17 national team, so what's it like watching a lot of the you know, USL boys and the Jamaican national team now and the Gold Cup and stuff? Nah, it's fun to watch them, <laughs> you know what I mean? Those guys are like my bros. Like, if we in Jamaica, we hang on together, we call each other, yo, where are you going? Yeah. Are you going to practice here or there? Yo, where are you going to the gym or whatever, you know what I mean? So it's not just like, okay, it's in Jamaica, I know, right? right. We are like boys, like we are friends. You still trying to get back to the first team though? Like, yeah, I'm trying to get back, you know what I mean? That's the reason why I'm still playing. I'm just working really hard and hopefully my turn can come. They didn't say anything after last year, 15 goals? Well, mm -hmm. I talked to like the manager and he just told me, you continue to work hard. You might think that we're not watching, but we are. So that's my thing, just working hard and hopefully they could call me up and I could go and show what I can do, you know what I mean? You still have some goals and aspirations still? What's your dream? Hopefully I could get back to get to Europe. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a dream, you know what I mean? To get to Europe playing. Mm -hmm. I want to play Europe too. I love playing Europe.
time. Yeah. Big, that's yeah. big for the players and yeah. for the league. For the league. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, that's more eyes. As you can see, you saw that the Jamaican guy, Brian Brown, went to Albania. Oh, I didn't even know that. He went to the championship team. He just signed. Oh, he just signed. But from the championship signed. team in Albania? Yeah, so he was playing for Reno. No, he got signed oh, to the Ford? Yeah, so he got signed to Albania team that won last season. Wow. From the Gold Cup too. Because he was the star yeah, striker was, for yeah. a while, right? Yeah, he was in the Gold Cup. So. Uh, yeah, I think it goes well for the league. Like yeah. Jordan, for example, getting called up too. Like, the fact that USL players are still, you know, the dude from our team, Kara South, played against US. And they did really well, well, as you can they see. Played. They played. They did. Look, 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 look at Speedy. Yeah. Devin Williams from yeah. Louisville. The other dude from Louisville, here. too, the center back. Center back. The left back, right? Yeah, Sean Francis. Yeah. You know what I mean? As you can see, as I said, the league is growing. Like, a lot of guys get chances, you know what I mean? Um, uh, I can tell you this. The guys who played in MLS and in Europe, didn't walk over those USL guys. Yeah. So that says a lot. Canada too has a lot of USL guys yeah. too. Um, I think Kurosawa will one or two. Yeah, yeah, Trinidad yeah. have a few. Trinidad had we have a son of it, starting son of it from Trinidad too. Like it just shows that our quality and like like you said earlier, you can't take this league for a joke anymore. And yeah. Like I'm happy for every single one of those guys because we need that as a league. Yeah, we need that. And stuff. People when they see USL soccer now, it's like, oh, all right, well these guys can at least hang with us yeah. a little bit mm, and stuff. Yeah. Like, we had our dude Andrew Grootman, the left back national team. He went out there and said he did really well in the camp, but they're kind of just like the USL tag on his new yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 can't be inviting a USL player to the full team national camp. Yeah, 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 that plays a role too. But just yeah, the fact yeah. that USL, I think, I've never heard of a USL player getting invited to the US national team camp, but to have a USL player, you know, invited to the US national team camp just shows like we're on the radar a little bit. Yeah, and that's, that, that's, that's big time, you know what I mean? And after a few years, people gonna like really respect the USL, you know what I mean? As you can see, like almost every year you see players leaving from the USL going elsewhere. All right. There's also a new wave of kids that are coming to the league that are foregoing college. Mm -hmm. Do y'all think that's the, not the best route, but if you're serious about soccer, like a good route to take because the USL is trying to get a little bigger now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure four or five years from now, it's a different league. Yeah. Even right now in Pittsburgh, when I used to go to college, they used to get like, get a certain amount of um, support. You know what I mean? People never really go to game. Mm -hmm. But since I started playing, like every year it's just started to get better and better. Even the other night, there's like a full house. Uh, back then? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we had like a full And it was better than last year. Mm -hmm. so, and the atmosphere is nice, man. Like, mm -hmm. like, like, yeah, you get, yo, the other night we got a soccer atmosphere. Yeah, yeah. for real, for real. For the entire 90 the minutes. Scored, like, the, yeah. 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 the Steel Army was just going crazy. I was sitting on a bench and I was like, coach, you need <laughs> I see her. I was so, I was like, I'm like, damn. The wild part is, it was even a regular. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, all of them still yeah, say this. Yeah, bro. Was, was bro, bro, we got like a soccer atmosphere. Yeah, they had it with that joint. Yeah, yeah. 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 crazy. Damn. damn. Everyone cheering, they clapping yeah, together, yeah, yeah. everything. Like, yo, soccer growing. And now even with the academy players training with us, like yeah, Pittsburgh did it last year. You still, I'm, I'm, you're still doing that, right? Yeah. But here in Charlotte, we do that too. A bunch of even college boys training with us, young academy boys. But I know throughout the league, all a lot of academy players are training with the yeah. USL team now. But that just like to have teenagers around a professional environment. You I mean, don't know where they stand. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so they get an idea of what it is right, like. Right. And, you know what I mean? I wish I had that. That's what I was gonna say too. Like, yeah. I wish I was able to train. It. Just practice with DC or against DC players. I think that's what held me back home because my brother is like, yo, most of these kids you're better than these kids. Don't mm -hmm. play with them unless you have to. Mm -hmm. Go and play with the older guys. It's faster and stuff. So whenever you get back to your level, you're like at a higher level. Than, you know what I mean? And it's really good. Give you confidence. Also, you learn how to learn from the older guys. How should soccer keep growing in this country, though? It's growing. 
It's it's good. Good. I was kind of mad they didn't make the last World Cup because that would have like helped it a lot more. Course. Course. So they pushed it back a bit. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's kind of like a blessing in disguise, to be honest, because yeah. we're doing a lot of things wrong in the system. And that yeah. kind of like what we It showed us how like, far away yeah. we are, really. Still a lot, too. So like, yeah. the, the good thing is the World Cup is coming, so everybody has to move um, to move on quickly. To be it's crazy. crazy. Like, I saw, I think it was the U20 World Cup, and they compared the U20, like the people that were on the roster now and like back in the day. Back in the day, it was like a lot of people from college. Oh, but like yeah, no, it's a lot of pros. A lot yeah. of European pros, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, way so probably like one or two strong. college players. Yeah. The rest are like, That's, That's how it is now, because even your maker team, it's just like a few guys that play high school soccer in the U team. Now your guys that play pro. Going back home to play and stuff. And it's like they don't take you seriously unless you're pro as a team. Honestly, yeah. yeah. I'd have to consider going pro as a Would you guys go pro as a teenager? Right now, um, though, with like, like for us, for example, like, you know, you come from big schools or anything, you're not having a lot of opportunities, but you have an opportunity to go to the USL instead of college. I don't know if I'd go pro as a teenager, but I feel like I definitely would have went to a bigger college, yeah, I would say, because I feel yeah. like. Definitely. A lot of people, um, you know, a lot of people have had their career based on where they went to in college. Yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's big time. Because like, let's say, years you too, know man. what I'm saying, you go to a big school and you get drafted just off the strength of your name or you weren't, and you got one year in the MLS, let's say, for example, you got that on your resume, your price tag already higher than someone that thinks you got to do whatever. Less experience. You know what I'm saying? Like, he really played like 10 games. You feel me? If he played, then there was, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. shit like that. You know, but I, I don't think, I, I don't know if I'd go pro, because like, I feel like college is an experience in itself. It is. Um, you know, just in terms of going to a bigger school, probably, most likely. It's an animal too, I mean, we all know players are good enough to be pros right now, but yeah. college just ate them up. That yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, that's the yeah, like, yo, that's if, you know, if you're not careful in college, yeah, you always remind yourself of what you want to be in life. That's dangerous. <laughs> sports? I know. Sports, sports and me, bro, by far. A lot of distractions, bro. A lot of distractions. Because like, it's hard, because in college you have to understand that you're there for it. Let's say for soccer, but also you gotta go to school, you gotta go to class. You know what I'm saying? You fail out, then it's gone. You know what I'm saying? It's like getting that, staying out of trouble. You know, it's like because eyes are watching you. Mm-hmm. You know, what I'm <laughs> like you can't act like a non-athlete. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So college is definitely a disciplined thing. So like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you ready for the real world. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely, guys, yeah, get you ready for the real world. I couldn't, I, was, I couldn't imagine not experiencing college now because of like the shit I experienced in college and how that's. It's definitely prepared how, me, like. You know what I'm saying? It's like little yeah, things right. that. And I see it like with a lot of young boys and watching 18, 20 year olds and stuff like. I see it with some young boys on team as well. <laughs> 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 uh, but yeah, like I see it, and sometimes like they just can't handle themselves, or they're not picking themselves up like that. Or, you know, there's a lot of little things that it just teaches you that you don't even realize sometimes you get to the real world like that. So, Moss, for you though, like the French system, how would you compare that? What should like the American system do, like to kind of emulate that? And, I mean, I think college is good. It's a good thing because, but if you're 17 and you turn pro and you make so much money you go crazy mm. and you have no one to stop you because you got so much money than so much more money than everybody else so i don't know um and also anything can happen during your career so if you don't have a degree and you get injured at 24 what you gonna do but what are people doing at back at home if they're not going pro they just work that's now. a big problem back home because no degrees like that right every yeah everybody bet on play soccer and make money out of it. So if you don't make it pro, some people just go back to where they where they're from and struggle after that. Mm-hmm. So it's really I mean I was to be fair, I was struggling. Yeah. I was struggling. 
And that's why I decided to come in America because I saw that on TV and I was like, I want to, I want to do that on TV. Yeah, on TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Media, it's not a dream. It's not a dream. Yeah, very dream. Yeah, very yeah. dream. Come on. I saw that. Too. I saw that. <laughs> best, the best place in the world. Come on. Best, like, you know what? You see American Pie? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that I, I, when I was younger, I thought American Pie. You went to watch Well, you didn't go to watch Virginia. Watch Virginia is right beside the school, right? University. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's more like American Pie. Yeah. I mean, that was that was kind of far. So like, uh, okay. I stayed focused on soccer in school. I got to look in that part because I knew for a fact that if I went to a big school, mm -hmm. I wouldn't play in Pittsburgh right now. I probably had my degree, but. I think it's something very else. Very fast, heavy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, yeah, question. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things that I know are what's supposed to be better than me and recruited higher. Just, just uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> animal in itself. College is an yeah. animal, bro. Yeah. I tell kids, a lot, of the, a lot of the kids, they know they're going to go pro. If you know you're going to pro, mm -hmm. honestly, like, go that route because I mean you can always you can get your money anyways you can go back to school and do your thing yeah it's that's the like, thing it gets to go back the chances of you becoming a pro and actually playing for a high quality team at a young age is rare too like a lot of MLS teams aren't giving young kids opportunities so mm -hmm. if you're a young kid and you do have an opportunity like what's the name from DC um, Griffin 16 Griffin yeah, 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 yeah. made his first MLS start like two days ago but he's been playing for a lot like every single game mm -hmm. he's 16 got MLS homegrown contract 70k chilling but you're 16, like, I probably wouldn't have passed it up either just because, like, I know I'm going to go pro, but mm -hmm. Rain Rooney and all these guys on a consistent basis and be 16, be a star. Do you think the MLS should be giving kids more time now? Um, certain teams, yeah. I feel like you have some teams that give their youth. Mm. Like, I think uh, Union, mm. they give their team. Red Bulls, too. Yeah, Red Bulls. You know what I'm saying? But it depends on the quality of the kid. Exactly. If you're good enough, you, you can you, play. You deserve to play. Yeah. You play. Like, I think DC has, uh, what's his name? Durkin? Durkin. I think, I think he should play more than yeah. I think sometimes a coach, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some coach that believes in kids. Yeah. Is he have some kid, they sign you and those kids working hard in practice. They ain't there. And they're like, okay, I'm waiting for one opportunity. But the coach should never really give you that opportunity. I, mean, I, I, I still it is come back to the coach and the system, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. some coach, you might look at some coaches in MLS and if you check, they might never play like four or five young guys before. Right. A lot of coaches like that. Yeah. But some coaches, they're going to tell you, there's two types of players. It's either you're ready to play or you're not. Mm -hmm. right? As it should so be. it doesn't matter your age. Look at Daniel Alves right now, he's 35. He's still ready to play at all times, mm -hmm. so they're going to play. Right. So if you're a young kid, even when you show that you're ready to play, they're going to tell you, oh, you have to go in the second yeah. team and prove yourself. And, you know what I mean? You never really get opportunity, but sometimes just a coach. And, you know what I mean? Hopefully players can look into that. And but why do they do it overseas in Europe and we don't do it? I agree that. Because right. they believe in the system of kids are the future. Yeah. It's either you're ready or you're not ready. That's a, that's a business too. A lot of people like, they'll play based off your name or whatever, like when others are more deserving. So I have a friend that plays in the, the MLS, you know, and I feel like he should be starting. You know, I ask, you know, ask him how he's going in training, he's like, oh, so he's balling out. But like, Still not the good. coach will just play the older guys, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Just, and then sometimes too, it's based on the money you're on. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the MLS is based on the money you're on. I bet you if Alexis Sanchez was in an MLS team, he plays every single game. Every, he wants. <laughs> every single game. It doesn't matter. Some some teams it's just based on oh, he's making X amount of money. This continent to play. Yeah. Play, play. Sure. But like you said, it's a business though. And like I feel like overseas when you look at teams like um What's that? Who did Atletico Madrid just buy? Yeah, Joel Fix. I was thinking about the same player. Him. I can keep going about a bunch of young players. But it's a business in the sense where there's a reason why, you know, smaller clubs are producing players like that over and yeah. over because they actually care about the youth, develop the youth, then they sell them high. Yeah. 
take yeah, in and they yeah. dump it all back into the system yeah. and bring some more kids back. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, oh my gosh, like you you would want your club and everything to promote you. You know, want this kid to get out because it only looks better. He came from your system, yeah, yeah. so it shows that like I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't understand a lot of these times where if the kid that deserves to play, he's good enough, he should be out there, give him his experience, and if he's not ready, then he can have a seat on the bench, learn his experience, but like, if he's ready and he can, what's his name on um, Philly, who's uh, Brennan Aronson, you remember him? Yeah, the yeah, 10? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He started, he started the past like 10 to 15 games. Really Crazy. You remember him, the 10 from Buckingham? Little, little, he, little he boy. Long long yeah. oh. Little boy. Yeah, long Shifty long. one. Shifty one, yeah. yeah. Starting past 10 games for Philly. But they just like they care about the youth and then yeah. you can play. Oh, yeah. well, bro. Both center backs are young too. Yeah, ready. Yeah, it's a good. But like you said, it's a business though, and like I feel like overseas when you look at teams like, um, what's that? Who the Atletico Madrid just? Yeah, by? Joe Fix. I was what thinking about the same player. Him. I can keep going about a bunch of young players, but it's a business in the sense where there's a reason why, you know, smaller clubs are producing players like that over and yeah. over because they actually care about the youth, develop the youth, high, yeah. then they sell them high, yeah. they take yeah. in and they yeah. dump it all back into the system yeah. and bring some more kids back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's yeah. like, yeah. oh my gosh, like you you would want your club and everything to promote you, you know, want this kid to get out of it, because it only looks better, he came from your system, yeah. so it shows that like, I know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I don't understand a lot of these times where if the kid that deserves to play, he's good enough, he should be out there giving his experience. Yeah, and if he's not ready, then he can have a seat on the bench, learn his bench. But like, if he's ready, and he can, what's his name on um, Philly? Who's uh, Brennan Aronson? You remember him? Yeah, the yeah, ten. Yeah, yeah. He started. He started the past like ten to fifteen games. Crazy. Really nice. Crazy. Right? Remember him? The ten from Beckham. Little little he, little he boy. Long, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Little boy. Yeah, long Shifty long. one. Shifty yeah. one. Yeah. Starting past ten games for Philly. But they just like they care about their youth and then yeah. you can play. Long long develop, bro. Both center backs are yeah. ready. Yeah. ready. Yeah. It's a good look on your team when you got right. your players getting involved right. by bigger clubs. Yeah. But y'all, I appreciate you guys coming on the show. Yeah, bro. Thanks to you, bro. No doubt, bro. I'll put that. Thanks to our sponsor, Golden Gold Press, the best choice for you to get your custom shirts, hats, mugs, and other items for just yourself or your organization. Check out their amazing products at a fraction of the price of other places at goldengoldpress.com. And also thanks to Roughneck Scarves, official scarf supplier to MLS, US, USL, and US Soccer. Get custom scarves for your group or team at roughneckscarves.com. Appreciate you guys.